Hi guys, uh, welcome to another IPsec series video and in this one we are going to take a look at the configuration of IPsec side-to-side -side VPN tunnel between Fortigate Firewall and the Microtech router. I already have the step-by-step -step instruction on my blog article and here's an article that covers the step-by-step -step instruction. So if you'd like to go through the step-by-step -step instruction, I would recommend check out my article, which I will link in the description. And here's the topology that we are going to work on. We have a Fortigate firewall at the headquarters and that has a subnet of 10.1.1.0 slash 24. Similarly, we have a Microtech device at the branch one and that has a subnet of 10.2.2.0 slash 24. All the devices in the Fortigate LAN site can talk to the internal network and the same way the Microtech LAN site as well is able to talk to the internal network. Also, both the LAN site can talk to the internet. However, the problem is the connection between the headquarters LAN site and the Microtech branch one LAN site cannot communicate to each other, which we are going to fix in this lab by setting up an IPsec VPN. So let's check the connectivity between the site before we proceed. I have a Linux host at the Fortigate site and a Windows server at the branch one. Let me start with the Windows Server. Open the command prompt. First, let's check the IP address of the server. So type IP config and hit enter. As you could see, I have an IP address of 10.2.2.98 with the gateway 10.2.2.1. That is a Microtech LAN interface IP. If I try to ping my gateway ping 10.2.2.1, you can see I'm getting a response, which means the internal connectivity looks good. And if I try to ping www.google.com, you can see I'm getting a response for that as well. That indicates the internet connectivity looks good. However, if I try to ping the remote branch IP, for example, ping 10.1.1.1, we won't get any response. Instead, you get a request timer, which clearly indicates that there is no connectivity between the branch sites. If I go back to the Ubuntu host that I have in headquarters, I mean, on the Fortigate side, you will see the similar behavior. When I check the IP address by typing IP ADDR, you can see I have an IP address 10.1.1.50, which I got it from the Fortigate DHCP service. Let me initiate a ping to my gateway, which is 10.1.1.1, ping hyphen C, which means how many times you want to send the ping request, which is two, and 10.1.1.1. You can see that I'm getting a response from my gateway. Use the up arrow again. This time, change the destination from 10.1.1 to www.google.com. And you can see that I'm getting a response for that as well. Just like we did on the other side, we'll try to ping 10.2.2.1. And you can see it is stuck. We are not getting any response. With that, let's start the configuration of IPsec from the Fortigate firewall side. And once done, we will then move on to the Microtech side. I already have my Fortigate firewall management GUI opened. In the Fortigate firewall, go to VPN on the left side and then click on the IPsec tunnels and click on create new and choose IPsec from the drop down menu. So this is IPsec configuration wizard and we are going to configure everything step by step. We'll start with the phase one setup and then move on to the phase two. In the IPsec configuration screen, start in the phase one configuration with the name. Since it is a Microtech branch, I will name it as mik-br1 and in the comment section let me add connected to microtech branch 1 under network in remote gateway leave static ip address and in the ip address field enter the microtech WAN side ip which is 9.9.9.102 so you need to enter your own public ip here interface choose a WAN interface from which you are going to initiate the ipc connectivity if you got multiple WAN interfaces, it is important that you choose the right interface here. In my case, it's only a single interface, which is port one connected as WAN interface. You may also choose the local gateway, which is not mandatory here if you have a single IP address, but I like to enable the local gateway and choose the primary IP. If your WAN interface has secondary IP, then you can choose secondary IP here. Or if you have third IP on the WAN side, then you might as well choose uh, specify and then specify the IP address, which is not needed in my case. In the NAT traversal, I'm checking the disable option as I have connected the Fortigate firewall directly to the public internet. In case if you are using the Fortigate firewall behind a NAT device, then you can choose the other option. If you choose the NAT, then the IPsec tunnel will initiate the tunnel negotiation on the port 4500, else it will negotiate on the default 500 port leave dead peer detection and dpd option default now towards the phase one authentication which i am selecting the default pre-shared key option which is a common way to set up ipsec phase one connectivity and in the pre-shared key section 
enter the secure pre-shared key in production network it is important that you enter a pre-shared key which is longer and strong with multiple characters that's it i also copied the pre-shared key which i can use it later on on the microtech side and in the ike version choose two scroll down now let's configure the phase one proposal in FortiGate by default, you will see set of possible strong encryption authentication keys are chosen, but it is best to choose only one set. Let me remove other set of parameters which I don't need at the moment. So I am choosing encryption as AES256 and authentication as SHA256. You are feel free to choose whatever you like. And in the Diffie Hellman group, the group 14 and 5 is already selected. Let me unselect the 14 and I'm choosing the group 5, which is good. Leave in the default time to 86400. I'm now scrolling down to add the phase 2 parameters. In the phase 2 selectors, expand the advanced icon. This is the end day phase 2 configuration options. It starts with the name. Let me name it as MIKBR1 sub 1, means subnet. And local address 10.1.1.0 slash 24. And remote address 10.2.2.0 slash 24. What I've seen the most common mistake that people make here, they interchange the subnet. For example, instead of choosing 10.1.1.0 slash 24 as a local address, they choose 10.2.2.0 slash 24. As a result, the phase 2 will not come up because it doesn't match on both sides. I always recommend document the local and remote address so that you're not confused while setting up the VPN. Under advanced, here also you will see multiple phase 2 proposals are chosen. Let me remove all the parameters except one. Like in the phase one, I'm going to choose encryption as AES256 and authentication as SHA256. Again, you may feel free to choose whatever you like. Leave enable replay detection and enable perfect forward secrecy as default. And in the Diffie Hellman group, unselect in the group 14 and select in the group 5. Check auto negotiation option. That would also check auto keep alive. This will ensure the phase 2 is always up, even there is no traffic. Leave key lifetime default, ensure everything looks good. And click on the tick button at the top to confirm the phase 2 selectors. You can now see our local and remote subnets are added. If you would like to add multiple subnets, you may click on the add button to add multiple subnets. You may now click on OK here. As you can see, our tunnel at the 40 gate side is now completed. And it is showing red with the down arrow, which means it is down. We completed the IPC configuration. And even if you configure the remote side, the tunnel will not come up. So the minimum requirement for the tunnel to come up is you have to set up the IPC tunnel and you need to also have a policy for the same. We need to allow the traffic coming in and going out of the tunnel. We are now going to configure the IPC policy at the 40 gate side. To configure the policies, go to policy and object on the left and then click on the firewall policy as you can see i have only single policy at the moment that allows LAN users to be able to access the internet click on create new to create new policy add a name allow traffic to microtech br1 incoming interface is the LAN that's where all the end users are connected outgoing interface choose ipsec tunnel that we just created in the source Click on the plus icon to add the source subnet. In that, choose LAN. You can see I already have an address group for the LAN subnet, which is 10.1.1.0/24. Let me add that into the policy. In the destination, I have to add Microtech LAN site, which is 10.2.2.0/24. Unfortunately, I have not added that in the firewall address group. Let me add that now. In the destination, click on the plus icon, click on create and address. For the new address group, enter the name of the address group, which is Microtech BR1. In the IP or net mask, add 10.2.2.0 slash 24 and click on OK. The newly added Microtech LAN subnet shows in a different color. Click on that to add into the destination. Choose the services to all. In production setup, you will have a specific services such as SSH, HTTPS or different port numbers allowed here. But since it is a lab, I'm just allowing all. Action should be accept and uncheck the NAT option. Let me log allow traffic. Ensure enable this policy is selected and then click on OK. We need to create a second policy for this tunnel from the Microtech branch side to the 40 gate LAN side. 
click on create new and add the policy name something like allow traffic from the microtech br1 incoming interface choose the ipsec tunnel that we just created outgoing interface choose the lan source ip choose the microtech lan subnet that we added destination choose the lan subnet of the fortigate firewall service all action accept uncheck the nat option log allowed traffic make sure you enable this policy is selected and then click on ok we have created the policy so this is only needed for the ipsec tunnel to come but the traffic will not work because we don't have any routing we need to tell the fortigate land users to take the microtech tunnel if they want to talk to 10.2.2.0/24 for that we need to add a route you could use dynamic route if you are planning to use dynamic route but in my lab i'm going to use static route on the fortigate firewall expand network on the left side and then click on static routes as you can see i have a single default route towards the internet that's the reason fortigate land users are able to talk to the internet let me add new route here in the static route window choose create new in the new static route destination choose 10.2.2.0/24 in the interface choose the vpn tunnel that we defined that's it in case if you have multiple tunnel you can click on advanced option and play around with priorities that way you can even have active 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 standby configuration which is not needed here so click on okay that's it we have completed the ipsec site to site vpn tunnel configuration at the fortigate firewall side it's now time for us to configure the microtech router at the branch one let me now switch over to the microtech router to configure the ipsec tunnel in microtech you can go to ip ipsec in the ipsec window you can proceed to configure the phase one of the tunnel that consists of profile peer and identities and the phase two consists of proposal and policies once all done we will then allow the traffic using the microtech firewall nat policy in the ipsec window click on profiles click on the plus icon to add new profile under name add name something like fg hyphen fw hyphen profile hash algorithm choose char 256 Encryption algorithm choose AS256, which we already selected at the Fortigate side. DH group mode P1536, which is DH group 5. Uncheck the NAT traversal option, like we did in the Fortigate, and then click on OK. Next, we will configure the peer. Click on the peers tab. Click on the plus icon to add new peer. Add a name FG FW peer1. In the address, enter the Fortigate firewall WAN address 4.4.4.51. In the profile, choose the profile that we just defined. Exchange mode should be IKV2. If you don't choose the exchange mode, by default it will choose IKV1. We are not selecting the passive mode. Instead, we choose send initial contact. That way, both sides can initiate the IPC connection and click on OK. Next, let's configure the identities. Click on Identities tab. This is where you define the pre-shared key that you copied from the FortiGate firewall. Click on the plus icon to add new identity. Choose a peer that we just defined. In the authentication method, you will see multiple options. Choose pre-shared key here and paste the secret key that you copied from the FortiGate firewall and click on OK. Remember, we haven't configured the phase two yet. We just configured the phase one. If you have configured everything correctly till this point, you will see the phase one of the tunnel is getting established. To see the phase one status, click on active peer star. You can see the tunnel state is in starting and after a few seconds, it has now moved to established state. Remember, we have not configured the phase two yet, but still the FortiGate firewall has both phase one and phase two configured and it initiated the traffic. Let's now configure the proposal. Click on proposal tab and click on the plus icon to add new proposal. Enter the name fg-fw-proposal. Select the authentication algorithm as SHA-256, encryption algorithm as AS-256, PFS group mode P1536, and click on OK. In Microtech, you add the phase to subnet in policies. Click on the policies tab and click on the plus icon to add new policy. In the general tab, choose peer that we defined and check the tunnel option. In the source IP address, add 10.2.2.0 destination address 10.1.1.0/24 in the action choose encrypt and choose proposal that we defined and click on ok you can see in the phase to error the message one sent and after few seconds it is now in established state 
Though the IPsec tunnel in Fortigate and the Microtech side is in a established state, the traffic will not pass because we have not defined the policies at the Microtech side to allow the traffic. To configure the policy, click on IP, Firewall, click on the NAT tab and click on the plus icon to add new NAT policy. In the general, under chain, choose source NAT, which is the default option. In the source address, add Microtech LAN subnet 10.2.2.0 slash 24. In the destination, add Fortigate side LAN subnet 10.1.0 slash 24. In the action tab, choose accept under action dropdown. Check the log option if you'd like to see the traffic logs and click on OK. Once the rule is defined, you will see it is sitting at the bottom. Move the rules to the top like so. So the rules are created and it is at the top. You can see no traffic so far hit on this rule. Let's go ahead and check the phase 1 and phase 2 status on both the Microtech router and the Fortigate firewall. As we mentioned earlier, in Microtech router, in the same IPsec window, you can click on the Active Peers tab and see the Phase 1 tunnel status. You can see that it's already in established state. To see the Phase 2 tunnel status, you can click on the Policies, which is in established state as well. You can see the status of the IPsec tunnel in Fortigate by going into the VPN and then IPsec. However, the best place to manage the IPsec tunnel is from the Dashboard widget. Go to the Dashboard at the top left corner and click on the status. At the moment, only WAN link bandwidth utilization is now shown. I'm going to add new widget for the IPsec. Click on Add Widget. Search for IPsec. Click on the plus icon to add the IPsec widget. Click on Add Widget. Expand the IPsec widget. You can now see that IPsec Phase 1 and the Phase 2 status here. If you hover on the Phase 2 status, you can see the Phase 2 subnet also here. One benefit of this dashboard is that you can even bounce IPsec tunnel interface. Let's now check the communication from both sides, starting from branch 1 Windows Server. Let me initiate the ping again. As you can see, we were not able to ping before. Now we are getting the successful response, which is good. Let's move on to the Fortigate side. As you can see, the Ubuntu also now getting a response to the ping traffic. We have now successfully built an IPsec site-to-site -site VPN tunnel between Fortigate and the Microtech router. And we were also able to test the traffic by pinging the each remote end. And that's it. We have successfully built IPsec site-to-site -site VPN between Fortigate and the Microtech router. And we were also able to test the traffic by pinging each remote end. If you find this video useful, please like the video and subscribe to my channel. And if you have any suggestions, questions or comments, please let me know in the comment section below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys on the next one.